Hi guys, welcome back. This is the Big Sew Along and I am Ginny and today I have a little bit of a chat for you. Some more, uh, some more about some knits and some new patterns and stuff. I, um, before we get to that, I was uh, remiss uh, in my last video when I said I thought things were going to calm down because I forgot that we had painters in the house this past week, like the whole week. Um, which was incredibly chaotic and crazy and Friday when they left and they were finished I felt like I really deserved a treat so I hopped on my bike and I rode over to my local yarn shop I finished a sweater this past week uh, that I had started I think I started that February or something and I just put it down because I was working on other stuff um, so I picked that back up and I finished it and then I decided I needed to, to start a new knitting project so I was headed to the yarn store to, to get some yarn and I ended up getting this like beyond adorable knitting bag. I know, pink and zebras, like it doesn't get better than that. Really, really, I did get yarn too but I have to tell you I was really pleased with my bag purchase. This is from a company called Attenti, they can make lovely, lovely bags. Um, I've been looking at their bags for ages. I just never bit the bullet and bought one. But yeah, I felt like I deserved it on Friday. So um, that said, the rest of the week, um, because I had painters in the house, they obviously didn't need to paint my sewing room because you all know that I did that um, a few weeks ago. So I was uh, sort of remanded to my uh, sewing room or the porch all, all week, which is fine for me. Um, I actually got a ton of sewing done. Most of it was like sort of experimental. I was trying some new patterns, um, playing with muslins, um, stuff like that. I did finish a couple of projects. And I'm gonna show you here really quickly. Um, again, I'm, as usual, I'm reading off of my phone, so excuse me for not looking at the camera. Um, well, first of all, I, I know there's at least one fan of quads out there. So I'm gonna post this picture up here. This is me trying to set up my camera this morning and <laughs> take some pictures and Claude getting in on the action. Anyways, the first thing I made was what I'm wearing today. And this is the origami dress from the Maker's Atelier. This is made for uh, lightweight jersey fabrics. I, I think that you, they say in there that you can make it out of a drapey woven as well but only if you're doing the sleeveless version. There's a version, um, and I'll show you a picture here, of this that comes with the sleeves. What I liked about this, and when I, I originally bought this pattern for this, because it has this little twisty thing in the front. And I really like things that do that. I like things that have twists or um, pleats or gathers or anything that's a little bit like asymmetric or um, what's another word for it? I, I don't know. Yeah, I really like that. I was gonna say, sort of architectural, I like things that are sort of architectural too. Anyways, this I wouldn't say was very architectural, but I do really like this little knot detail. So I um, broke up this fabric that I've had, I think I got this fabric from Haberman, I know I got it from Haberman's. I think I got it last year. And I can't remember what I was, I can't remember what I got it for originally, but I thought it would be good for this dress. I'm thinking, that it would be nice to have a couple of just like t-shirt dresses for going around the house or in the yard during this last few months of summer when it's been really hot and stuff. So I'll show you a couple of pictures of me in this dress and um, I will say I made this dress once before when the pattern very first came out and I can't remember when that was so maybe 2017 something like that. Um, I think it was about five or six years ago. Anyways, um, the first time I made this, I made this in the size that they recommended, which was a size, I think, I'm pretty sure it was a size 14 for, for my measurements. And um, I made it in a really drapey, viscose kind of um, knit. And I really didn't like it. I didn't like the way it sat over the bust. And so I looked at the pattern again and I decided that maybe the problem was that it was too, too big. Like there was too much draping, it just didn't. It just did not look nice in the bust area. So 
I cut the whole pattern down one size and this is what I ended up with and I'm much happier with it. Um, I did hem my sleeves and my neckline, although they tell you how to, uh, to just, that you can just leave them raw too. I think I hemmed mine on my original one too, but I don't have that anymore. So the other thing is, you guys will remember in my last video, I was wearing my Metro tee from Trish Newberry and that dress, the one that I was wearing last video is an organic cotton jersey and I really like that dress. It's super comfy and it's super cute, I think, but that fabric sticks to everything. So if you wear it with leggings, like it just sticks to everything. I don't know if it's the leggings or the dress or what, doesn't really matter. I thought I would try that again in a different kind of knit. And, and actually, I think now if I had used one of these like rayon spandexy knits, that might have been better. It might have been less like sticky. What I ended up doing was making this dress, which is uh, made in another 100% cotton jersey. So, you know, what was I thinking? Except that this one is really lightweight. It's, it's super lightweight, like not quite tissue jersey, but close. So, the, I don't know if you guys can remember, in the last video, I had a problem with my with that metro dress getting pulled to one side, the short sleeve side. And I don't know why it does that. I have no idea. I can't figure it out. But, because it feels like, like there's more fabric on this side, so it seems like it would pull this way, but it doesn't. It pulls to the short sleeve side. Anyways, I decided to try this one sleeveless and see if that helped. So, I cut the sleeve off, um, as you can see in this picture. That did not really help. <laughs> what I did do that helped a little bit was I put some um, clear elastic just in the back of the neckline, not to gather it up or anything, but just to sort of hold it in place. That seemed to help a little bit. Um, although it does still pull to the side, I have to say. The other thing I did on this one is, you know, the right hand side that's sort of drapey. Um, on this one, because again, it's a cotton knit, it was really just like, riding up on my leggings. So I was trying to figure out a way to make that function a little better and I ended up using that same um, clear elastic and sewing it into that side seam um, where the gathering is. So you can see here in this picture how that sort of pulled it all up and then it's not, it's really not like grabbing to me as like it was before because that drape sort of like hugs your leg if you otherwise and that's I think what was causing it to like ride up on my leggings. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with this one. I think it's cute. I will say, I don't think I'll make another one. I, this is actually the third time I've made the Metro dress. I really like this dress and I think it's adorable, but I feel like it's just, I, and this is, this is not a slam on the pattern at all. It's a great pattern. But a lot of times with things that are asymmetric like that, they look really cute and I really love the way they look. I don't like the way they feel when you're wearing them because they are always like pulling one way or another because they're asymmetric. So you're going to have like weight in one part of your dress or skirt or whatever and none on the other, like the corresponding side. And it all, it's always going to make it a little like pulley, <laughs> pulley, a little awkward. It's just, it's just a little awkward to wear. I don't know if you guys, um, in that, also in that last video, I was showing you a picture of that Tom and Linda Platt from uh, Vogue uh, top that I made, la I think they made that last summer. I love that too. It's really cute, but it's exactly the same thing. The asymmetry makes it ride on your body in a really awkward way. So it's just not that comfortable to wear. So as much as I love this dress, um, I'm pretty sure that that will be my last Metro t-shirt dress. I did want to say that the fabric I used for this one was another piece of fabric that I got from Latoff Fabrics. And of course, as always, I'll put links for all these things below. Um, this op art printed like cotton jersey, I got the last piece, it was two yards. And I think um, to make this dress, I used most of it. Um, I did put a binding around the neck and I also put a binding around my um, sleeveless armhole and the pattern has a binding for the neck but not for the sleeveless armhole. That was the only thing I added to the dress. It's like remove that sleeve and put a binding on. Okay, enough about that. So that was the major part of my sewing this week. 
missed those two things. I, I, I did a few other things too, but like I said, nothing really all that interesting. Um, what I did do was I got tooling around on uh, the internet looking for other patterns that have this sort of drapey, ruched, um, I don't know, uh, pleated details. And while there are many of them, I came across this uh, that I had pinned on my Pinterest board from a company called Studio Faro. They're out of uh, oof, New Zealand or Australia. I can't remember. I apologize. I, I, I think it's Australia, but I'm not 100% sure. And anyways, Studio Faro, um, this draped tube skirt. I, uh, I'm sort of obsessed with the tube skirt lately, and I really like the idea of doing something that's different than just a plain tube, and since I'm really into my ruching and pleating and twisting lately, I thought that this one would be really good. So I did buy this pattern and I have it cut out, but I have not made it yet. Um, I also bought something from them called the Drape Back Dress, and I'll show you the picture here. I, I have this pattern, I, I did buy this pattern, and I printed and cut my pattern out. I don't have the fabric cut out for that one yet. But this dress also reminds me, it reminds me of the envelope dress from Chris Wood Sews also. You guys, I'm sure are more familiar with that one. Anyways, they're similar and I think that the idea is similar, the way that they're constructed. I don't have the um, envelope dress, but I'm thinking I might get it and just do a little comparison. Anyways, that's a different story. Anyway, the so the drape back dress is, um, the second one I got, and you can see how it's, I don't know, I'm hoping you can see in this picture, how um, it's got a seam across the back, a seam in the front, and then a, a center front seam, a center back seam, and a seam that goes like across the shoulder. Anyways, it does this really cool, I I looked at the pattern, I read the directions, everything, I love the way it goes together, it's really cool. Like I said, I haven't put that together yet, but I'll do that this week. But, what I really wanted to say was, they have all these other really interesting um, patterns that I thought would be really fun. Now, a lot of them, the two, that, those two that I bought, the um, skirt and the drape back dress, were actual PDF patterns that you just print out and use. But a lot of their patterns are made like this, this uh, wrap drape tunic here, um, this cowl back tee, this thing here called the gather shirt, which I really love the idea of this. I think it's really cool. Um, this one here called a cowl tee. I'm going to try this probably, but I can tell already I'm going to have <laughs> the same issue that I had with the other asymmetric t-shirt. I might try it anyway though. Uh, this thing called the handkerchief fold dress. Uh, the kimono twist dress. The seamed cowl. This thing I think looks really, really cool. It's called the Dolman Coat. Yeah, so those are the ones, those are just the ones I picked off of their website to to show you guys kind of what they what they're doing. But most of their patterns are not actual patterns that you print and cut out and sew together. Most of them um, are instructions for how to draft your own pattern from a basic block. Now, I did buy the basic woven block from Studio Faro while I was there. I think it was 25 US dollars for that. And the reason I did that is because I don't wear <laughs> many fitted clothes that aren't yeah, knits, it's like t-shirts and stuff, yes. But um, most of my woven garments are not fitted and I don't even have a pattern for anything I don't think I have a pattern anymore that is a woven garment that is a fitted garment. So a lot of their patterns are actually just PDF instructions for how to take a block and turn it into these garments that I think are really cool looking. And they have a lot, lot more. So if you like things that are more tailored, they have a lot of stuff like that. If you like things that are more vintage, they have a lot of things like that. Anyways, so the re I got the block so that I could try a couple of their patterns. Now, I think the, um, the, I can't remember which one. I did get one of the patterns that is just the instructions to draft your own pattern. So I'm going to work on that this week and I will let you guys know, um, how it goes. Oh, I almost forgot, um, 
last week I was talking to you guys about last week I left you guys a link and I told you about um, a, an Etsy vendor called Cozy Cozy Wool that I found from I want to think it was I want to say it was Karen that left me some links to some <laughs> Instagram profiles that I shared with you last week and in one of those profiles I found this woman Cozy Cozy Wool and I ordered a scarf from her but I also ordered two yards of this fabric which is a it's she calls it silk chiffon but it, it's probably closer a little bit to a georgette I think it's a little heavier than a chiffon and it's got this really cool um printed like Japanese text I guess it's Japanese I don't I don't remember um anyways yeah, so this um, this fabric, it's lovely. I have to say, it just has the silkiest hand, um, and the print is amazing. Um, anyways, I was thinking about using that to make my um, drape back dress from Studio Faro. So I'm going to run up a muslin of that in the next couple of days and see how that goes. If I like it, um, I'll make another one, and hopefully I'll get to that, um, the one that's just instructions, too. So I can give you guys like a little, a few tips on, on how to work with those if you're interested. All right, guys, I think that is it for me this week. As always, I thank you so very much for stopping by and um, spending some time with me. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions or anything. Leave them below. I'm always interested to hear what you guys think. Um, and until next time, happy sewing. <laughs>